Thank you. I will ask first a very simple question. RA number 6770, the Ombudsman Act provi provides, and I read, section 22, investigatory power. The office of the Ombudsman shall have the power to investigate any serious misconduct in office, allegedly committed by officials removable by impeachment for the purpose of filing a verified complaint for impeachment if warranted. Question, under the law, Ms. Witness, as ombudsman, you can investigate any serious misconduct allegedly committed by the Chief Justice. Since an impeachment trial is now ongoing, the only purpose for your present investigation should be to file a verified complaint for impeachment by December of this year. Here is the question. Do you intend, if the defendant is acquitted, to file a second complaint for impeachment this year? Your Honor, it is the House which determines whether on the basis of the data it receives. I am not asking about who decides. I am asking about a provision in the Ombudsman yes. Act which provides Section 22. Mm. The Office of the Ombudsman shall have power to investigate, etc., for the purpose of filing a verified complaint for impeachment if warranted. That is your job. So is that job being undertaken now by the Ombudsman with its present investigation, since there's no point investigating. Uh, an impeachment trial is already ongoing. Therefore, under Section 22, your sole purpose could only be to file a second complaint for impeachment after the one-year ban provided by law. That Therefore, is I'm asking you the question, do you intend, if in this first impeachment trial the defendant is acquitted, do you intend to file a second impeachment complaint against him after the one-year ban? Madam Senator, if the, if the charges presently being investigated by the Office of the Ombudsman are not included in the impeachment charges, then I don't see any reason why there should be no chance to file another impeachment complaint. I'm sorry, I don't then. get the question very correctly. Mm. The answer very correctly. Is your answer a yes or a no? Is that a yes? Your for the purpose Intending of filing file. yes. an impeachment complaint? That's right. If that is warranted after a, the investigation, conclusion Thank of the investigation. You. Yes, that is what the law says. For the purpose of filing a verified complaint for impeachment, if warranted. Yes. If you think it, it is warranted, then, we then your only purpose will be to file a second impeachment complaint. Isn't that so? Is that a fair question? If it's warranted, we will. All right. Thank you. That is the only question. So we are placing the defendant on notice that if, even if this court acquits him, he can expect a second impeachment complaint by December this year. For that is what the law says. The ombudsman cannot investigate unless it is for the sole and only purpose of filing a verified complaint for impeachment if warranted. You are so warned. May Thanks I be allowed answer. to speak, Your Honor? That is for the presiding officer to Your may I, please be allowed. You may answer to qualify yes. that uh, nothing will prevent the ombudsman from filing for future proceedings if warranted. I take that as a, as a yes. I am a student of constitutional law. Let me now go to certain questions of constitutional law. This is going to be a little tedious, but still it needs to be raised. I am very intrigued by the worldview of the ombudsman on the relationship between a constitutional provision or provisions on the one hand and the provisions of laws passed by Congress on the other hand. Well, I have to start with the fundamental principle, and I hope you'll all forgive me, that the Constitution is a written limitation of the powers of state. It is not a written grant of state power. Four. The fear always is that government might turn tyrannical against its own citizens. In fact, reflecting this fear, our Constitution specifically provides in the Declaration of Policy in Section 1, sovereignty resides in the people and all government authority emanates from them. I draw from this background the conclusion that if there is any doubt, the doubt must be resolved in favor of the rights of the citizen and against the powers of the state. With that preface, let me now proceed. First, I would like to recite the constitutional provisions of the powers of the Ombudsman, which appear to be very plenary, infinite, and wide-ranging. 
These are the provisions of the Constitution, Article 11, and I will qualify them by saying that Congress passed a law called the Ombudsman Act of 1989, virtually copying the constitutional provision. Under Section 13, the Office of the Ombudsman shall have the following powers, functions, and duties. Five, request any government agency for assistance and information necessary in the discharge of its responsibilities, and to examine, if necessary, pertinent records and documents. Section 33, duty to render assistance to the Office of the Ombudsman. Any officer or employee of any department, bureau, or office, subdivision, agency, or instrumentality of the government, including government-owned or controlled corporations and local governments, when required by the Ombudsman, his deputy, or the special prosecutor, shall render assistance to the Office of the Ombudsman. Finally, Section 15, Paragraph 8, the powers of the Ombudsman, administer oaths, etc., including the power to examine and have access to bank accounts and records. These are the broad language employed by the Constitution and virtually copied in the law passed by Congress, the Ombudsman Act of 1989. But in, contra, in, in juxtaposition to these broad constitutional powers of the Ombudsman, we also have certain laws passed by Congress, which includes, naturally, both the House and the Senate. One of them is the Foreign Currency Deposit Act, which provides, Section 8, secrecy of foreign currency deposits. All foreign currency deposits, etc., are hereby declared as and considered of an absolutely confidential nature and except upon the written permission of the depositor, in no instance shall such foreign currency deposits be examined, inquired, or looked into by any person, government official, bureau, or office, whether judicial or administrative or legislative or any other entity, whether public or private. That law is still existing, the Foreign Currency Deposit Act. So immediately we are faced with a question, how broad are the powers of the ombudsman or should we adopt the world view or the mindset that the ombudsman's powers are unlimited as long as they are listed, they are among the list that are born in our constitution? I was citing the Foreign Currency Deposit Act. Now let me cite. May I request the lady to wrap up uh, where uh, we have a rule and. Uh, my attention has been called. May I request for extension of time, yes. please? Thank you. That could be two plus two equals four minutes. Let me go to the AMLAC Act. It says, in effect, because I've been asked to shorten my question, I was trying to lay the background so that it would all be clear. In effect, under the AMLA Act, the AMLC, or the council, should first find probable cause then it should file the complaint before the Department of Justice or the Ombudsman, who shall then conduct the preliminary investigation of the case. That is what the law says. So, in effect, therefore, I will just go immediately to the question to follow the injunction. Question, it appears that you take the position that the power of the Ombudsman under the Constitution to request the AMLC for assistance and information should prevail over the procedure provided in the AMLA and even over the decision of the Supreme Court. I'm referring to the Eugenio case where the Supreme Court said there is this favor towards construing these exceptions in such a manner that would authorize unlimited discretion on the part of the government or of any party seeking to enforce those exceptions and inquire into bank deposits. If there are doubts in upholding the absolutely confidential nature of bank deposits against affirming the authority to inquire into such accounts, then such doubts must be resolved in favor of the former. Is it your position, Madam, that the power of the ombudsman, the powers of the ombudsman under the constitution override the provisions of the AMLA as passed by Congress and the Eugenio case, which I ju just quoted, as decided by the Supreme Court. That is the question. And then I'll have a second one. I just am abided, I, I, am, I must just abide by what the provisions of the ombudsman 
law provides. Until the provision is declared unconstitutional, I must abide by it, Your Honor. So, can you please respond to this question? You mean that your powers as enumerated in the Constitution override the laws passed by Congress, such as AMLA law, the Judicial Bank Secrecy Deposit Law, the Foreign Currency Deposit Law, and even the case of Eugenio? I, I invite Supreme. your attention, Your Honor, to the AMLA law, um, Section 3, Subsection B. If you could read it to me, please. I will. Covered transaction is a transaction I am familiar cash with that or so, other since I'm very under monetary. very limited time all right section 3 C yes 3 C it says monetary instrument refers to coins or currency of legal tender of the Philippines yes. or so, of any other country so what is the point of your answer my point is that dollars are covered by the there is no question about no. that. Okay. The, qu the issue so, here is that under right. the AMLA law, mm. first, it is the council must conduct a, a, yes. a fact-finding system and then re if it finds probable cause, refer the matter to you for preliminary investigation. But you did not follow this procedure. But Plus, there is a provision in the same law that mm. provides that you first must first go file a petition in court and get a court order before AMLA can answer your question. Yes. That is, that is the focus of my question. Yes, Your Honor, but this applies only for cases involving money laundering. That is your position, that yes. these provisions apply only to money laundering cases. Yes. So let me go to the next question. Your position would logically lead to the conclusion that the bank accounts of any public officer can be offered opened on mere request by the ombudsman without any court order. But let me place that question in context. Under the Ombudsman Act, the ombudsman has no disciplinary authority over impeachable officials, members of Congress, and the judiciary. So let me repeat the question and then I will end because I'm under time constraints. Are you the opinion, therefore, that should somebody file a complaint against any of our senators or members of the House, you can just go straight to AMLA and ask for our records without going to the court or without waiting for probable cause to be found by the council itself. That would depend on the complaint, Your Honor. Yes, of course, it will depend on the complaint. But suppose, hypothetically, that you find that the complaint is warranted. Is that your view, that, that you can just act on your own? It would Sua depend. Sponte. It would depend on the nature of the complaint. I know that, but mm. suppose that after all your own proce internal procedures and you have made a decision that the complaint is worthy of further consideration, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is it your considered opinion that as in this case, you can just go direct to AMLA and not follow the procedures in the AMLA law? Your Honor, again, I said it would depend on the complaint. Well, if you're fudging your answer. No, you, you said it's, I said You are it's arguing for, with a senator judge. I'm sorry, mea culpa. I, I accept the apology. Noted.